Hello and welcome. My name is Alicia Tegami, and I'm the Energy Sector Lead at the Science-Based Target Initiative. Through this video, I'll introduce you to the first consultation draft of the Power Sector Net Zero Standard. We are excited to open this public consultation and invite your feedback to ensure the standard is practical, science-based, and effective in driving net zero transformation across the power sector. In this video, I'll provide an overview of the draft now open for consultation, walk you through the key features of the power standard, and most importantly, explain how you can share feedback and get involved. We will begin with some background. Uh, I will first introduce the SBTI framework, the interoperability with SBTI sector standards, and how this new standard fits within it. And then I'll provide some background on the existing SBTI guidance for the power sector to finally move into explaining the draft power sector net zero standard itself. So let's start from the wider picture and an overview of SBTI modular structure. At the core of our framework is the SBTI corporate net zero standard, which provides the baseline requirements for companies across sectors to set science-based targets for scope one, two, and relevant scope three emissions. As the SBTI evolves into a formal standard setter, we have adopted a, a new modular structure. This means the corporate net zero standard is complemented by sector specific standards like this one, along with technical guidance on methods and pathways, all designed to work together to help companies reduce emissions in a consistent and coordinated way. The corporate net zero is currently undergoing a major revision and both the power and the corporate net zero standard updates are following the SBTI standard operating procedure, which lays out an iterative drafting process, including multiple public consultations. Therefore, as the corporate net zero standard version two draft is updated, the power sector standard will be updated accordingly. This approach ensures the two draft standards are fully interoperable throughout the drafting process and upon their final publication. So how does interoperability work? All companies shall use the SBTI corporate net zero standard as the starting point for setting SBTI targets. They shall calculate a complete greenhouse gas emission inventory and determine the applicability of SBTI sector specific requirements. When a company falls within the scope of a sector standard, it shall comply with all the applicable criteria within that standard, but only for the activities and emissions in the boundary of the sector standard itself. Emissions of the company falling outside the scope of a sector standard in line with the SBTI corporate net zero standard. Now let's briefly look at the background. In 2020, the SBTI released the quick start guide for electric utilities. The guide defined 1.5 C aligned pathways and target setting requirements for emissions from power generation, together with recommendations for transparency and best practices. This power standard builds on and will actually replace the current guide for electric utilities, expanding its coverage and offering updated sector specific criteria designed to address the unique emissions and operations of companies across the power sector. Once operational, the new power standard will replace the previous criteria for electric utilities. For companies in the power sector that already have targets set using the current guidance, those targets will remain valid until the five-year review cycle. At that point, companies will need to assess whether their targets still meet the latest SBTI criteria and update them if necessary. We do, however, encourage companies to align with the power sector standard earlier where possible. And while the power standard is under development, companies should continue to use the quick start guide for electric utilities to set science-based targets. Now let's take a look at the challenges the power standard is aiming to address. The power sector is the largest contributor to global energy related CO2 emissions, accounting for nearly 40%. At the same time, it faces growing physical risks with rising temperatures, reducing generation capacity and extreme weather events threatening critical energy infrastructures. As other industries accelerate, accelerate their decarbonization through electric 
demand for clean power will continue to grow. And this makes the sector both a cornerstone of the global net zero transition and a priority for ambitious climate action. However, challenges vary by region. While some countries are retiring coal and rapidly scaling up renewables, others face barriers such as limited infrastructure and energy access needs. The power standard provides a globally consistent science-based framework with built-in flexibility to reflect regional context, ensuring ambition while acknowledging diverse starting points. Here is an overview of the key components of the power standard. As I was mentioning, this standard is developed in line with the Corporate Net Zero Standard version 2, first public consultation draft, and expands its scope to a more comprehensive list of activities with detailed rules for applicability based on activities and emission sources covered by the standard. The power sector pathway has been updated based on scenarios from the sixth assessment report of the IPCC and the Net Zero by 2050 scenario by the International Energy Agency from which different sets of metrics were derived. The metrics and target setting methods reflect differentiated approaches based on the value chain activities and emission sources for power generation emissions. For example, it proposes requirements to phase out unabated fossil fuel capacity and a target on sustainable sourcing of biomass. For transmission and distribution and storage activities, the new standard incentivizes efficiency through requirements to minimize electricity losses, while for retailers, targets are aimed at increasing the share of electricity purchased from low carbon sources. The draft power standard mirrors the structure of the corporate net zero standard version two, covering the six key topics which are presented over chapters one through six. These chapters are preceded by two introductory sections, A and B, that describe interoperability with the Corporate Net Zero Standard version 2, the activities covered by the power standard, the emissions in scope, and applicability rules. The additional criteria for companies with activities and emissions in scope of the power standard are mainly in chapters 2 and 3. Chapter two covers the baseline performance in the target year through sector-specific indicators that companies have to determine. Chapter three details target setting requirements based on the activity type. Each chapter also includes a table detailing how companies should apply requirements from both the power standard and corporate net zero standard version two together. Here, you can see a snapshot of the overall eight sector-specific criteria included uh, in the power standard, where in chapter three, the requirements for target setting are grouped by activity type. We'll explore the main targets more in detail very shortly. But before that, um, it's worth mentioning that the standard also includes some normative annexes, such as Annex D, which describes the metrics and target setting methods used in the power standard, and Annex E, which details the underlying pathways. Additional information and background on this is also available in the informative documents that are published along with the standard. And these are the synthesis report on metrics and methods and the synthesis report on the pathways. Now let's talk about who this standard applies to. The power standard applies to four main activities, power generation, transmission and distribution, storage, trade and retail. Each activity has defined emissions in scope to capture only the relevant sources that require sector-specific metrics and target setting methods. Other emission sources are covered by the corporate net zero standard and were relevant, other available applicable SBTI sector-specific resources. The power standard aims to cover the key activities and emissions related to power sector operations while ensuring that it remains actionable by companies that have significant emissions within its applicability scope. Companies are therefore required to follow the applicable criteria within this standard if either their greenhouse gas emissions from in-scope activities combined are at least 5% of the company's overall emission inventory or above 10,000 tons of CO2 equivalents, or at least 5% of the company's total annual revenues come from electricity generation. Companies that don't meet these thresholds can still choose to follow the relevant parts of the power standard voluntarily or use the corporate net zero standard version two. 
The updated power sector pathway, uh, as mentioning, uh, is based on the International Energy Agency net zero emission by 2050 scenario and the set of C1 scenarios from IPCC 6 assessment report. This followed a comprehensive selection process that is better described in the supporting documents I mentioned before. The new pathway provides trajectories for emission intensity and low carbon power generation share, and these serve as key metrics for setting targets using intensity and technology convergence methods. I'd like to focus particularly on the targets for companies with power and generation activities, where our new approach is proposed for consultation. The standard proposes two key criteria. Criterion three, where companies set a mandatory emission intensity target for the net zero year. And for the interim years, companies can choose between setting a target on the emission intensity or the share of low carbon power generation. And then criterion four, which introduces a new requirement for companies to publicly disclose a plan to transition away from unabated fossil fuel power generation. The SBTI is seeking feedback and conducting further research to determine if this should be a mandatory requirement for all companies or used as an additional alternative to the options proposed for near-term target setting that I described for criterion three. For the other activities in scope of the power standard, this slide summarizes the proposal for companies with transmission and distribution, storage, trade and retail activities. For companies with electricity transmission and distribution activities, the requirements focus on mitigation of SF6 emissions and leakages, uh, mainly through monitoring and maintenance campaigns and minimization of electricity losses. Similarly, for storage activities, a maintenance target is proposed on the share of electricity losses, and we're seeking for consultation feedback on whether this should be a requirement or a recommendation. And finally, for companies with retail activities, the standard proposes setting targets to increase the share of electricity that is purchased and resold from low carbon power generation sources with a metric and a target setting method similar to the one described before for power generation activities. Now that uh, we've covered the technical side, let's turn to how you can participate in the public consultation process. The public consultation is open from September 2nd to November 3rd, 2025. The goal of this consultation is to gather meaningful input from anyone with an interest in the power sector's transition to net zero. Your feedback is critical to the development of a standard that is practical for businesses, scientifically robust and credible, helping accelerate climate action in line with net zero goals. To contribute, please complete the public consultation survey available through the Power Sector webpage, link below. The survey may take as little as 20 minutes to complete, depending on the topics you choose to cover. All resources uh, you need to respond to the consultation, including the Power Sector Standard Draft, supporting documents in this slides are available on our Power Sector webpage, linked in the description below. Following this consultation, this draft standard may then be refined in response to the feedback and will be re-released for pilot testing and a second round of public consultation. These opportunities will be promoted on the SBTI website, newsletter, and social media platforms. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to your feedback and continued building this standard together.